Hello everyone, it is me, Bob the Drag Queen. Listen, I know some of you are like, why don't you guys post the full video online? We do, but it's behind the paywall. So if you wanna see the full video with the audio, you can go to the Sibling Rivalry Patreon. We have tiers starting at $5 a month. So head over there to Sibling Rivalry, go to Google, type in Sibling Rivalry Patreon, and we will pop right up there for you. So I'll see you all there. Hello everyone, welcome back to Sibling Watcher. And today we have an extra special guest filling in for Monet Exchange. We have Lux Noir London, who is a finalist from the most recent season of RuPaul's Drag Race. Uh, and one of the uh, a combination between it girl and controversial <laughs> queen. I would say so too. Hi, Bob. How are you? Excited I'm to be great. here. Thank you. How, how do you how do you feel about your controversy? Cause like it felt like you were just being confident. Everyone was like, "Fuck this bitch! Why she believe in herself?" No, Dumbass literally. In herself. I think that's literally just what it was. Everybody was like, "Oh, she's a little too headstrong. We don't like that." And I was like, "Okay, you work." <laughs> I experienced a lot of that in my season two. People did not like that. I was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna win." And I was like, "They were like, they're, or I'm like, I'm great. I'm doing a good job. I'm really great." And they people do not like when you but like. I think there's this thing where people actually kind of low key like the the self doubt. They really they're really into the self deprecation. They're really into people calling themselves like trash bags and stupid and dumb and like not good and ugly. And something about that, I think people maybe relate to. Yeah, I, I think it's know. relatability. I have this like theory that people don't want anyone to be above them in any way. So if mm -hmm. they know that they don't feel as sickening as they want to feel, if somebody else does, they want to knock them down a peg because it's like, how dare you feel like you're better than better than me? I mean, I think you might be onto something here because I I've never understood. I, I thought I assume people would want to be around people who believe in themselves and who are speaking good about themselves and who say that they're great and talented and stuff especially on drag race it's like why would i spend all this time all this money to go and compete on a show that i didn't think i would like demolish why would i waste or my even time think i'd be good at like and like when a girl's like i look great and everyone's like do you wow like, what a bitch and i'm like it's like well sorry <laughs> sorry that i like what i see in the mirror literally um so let's go ahead and hop first of all how are you feeling about this season i actually like the season at first i was like it's an interesting cast of girls and I didn't know how they would all mesh, but it's working really good and I think that's why it's working so good because everybody's so different. I feel like I need a Madonna poster to counteract your Lady Gaga. <laughs> Jacob, do we have anything Madonna that I can just wave in front of the camera? <laughs> oh well, I mean, I can just like tilt it this way, <laughs> a controversial little moment. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I actually, okay, I like this season. Contrary to what people think, I actually do think this is a really entertaining season. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, honey. Yeah, honey. Now, if, if those of you who know what this is, those of you who know what this is, you get extra points. I'm not going to say what it is, but those of you who know, without me even opening it, what this is, you're the real ones. You're the real ones. Do you know what it is, Lux? Uh -huh. I, if I'm going to be real, you look a little choppy on the screen. So all I saw you hold something up. <laughs> I didn't just... Wow. I can't see what it is. I'll 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 text you a picture. How about that? I'll text okay. a picture to you. Can you describe um, it a little bit? Because this is a podcast. So just for people who are well, listening. Well, the, oh, yeah. The people, the, people who are, the people who are not on the Patreon, who are not on YouTube right now. I am holding up a... Um, a it is a foil casing there's something inside of it i would say it's the size of like a calendar or a book and it, and it has a picture of madonna on the front it's all kind of like blue and silver and it and on the cover it says in very small words it says madonna sex um and it is it for those of you who do, who know it is an original and i just text you the picture lux it is an original and yes i do have lux's phone number <laughs> i'm not i'm not gonna leak it um, but anyway, back, enough <gasps> about the divas. Wait, is this like an original original? This is an original Madonna sex book. Yes, it is. I'm kind of gagged. Yes, it is, honey. Yes, You kind of did gag me. <laughs> kind of gagged me a little. So, okay, so Plasma just gone home. Do you know Plasma from New York City? Um, no. I didn't know her before she got on Drag Race. And I think I met her probably once or twice out of drag post-filming. Um... Yeah. 
How were your interactions? Um, we were in more, she's a very chaotic person <laughs> and we were in like a club setting. So I don't think that that's a great place to we get say a first. She's a very wet person? Chaotic. <laughs> so I don't, I don't think it, that's like a great setting to be meeting somebody for the first time but um yeah I'm sure she's like lovely at like a brunch or something like that I'm screaming but I liked uh, what she was doing on the show it was very it was I, I, everyone knows that I was a big fan of what she did on the show I, I was I was very uh unabashed about sharing that information so now they're all, uh, you know, Pop just went home. Um, why did Morphine tell Maya that she thought she was going to go home? Like, why did Morphine go up to Maya and say that? Like, this, I feel like this cast shares a lot of their inside unsolicited, like on the outside. Yeah, sometimes you just got to keep certain things to yourself. But I don't really know why she would say that. But I mean, go off, girl. But the real gag is, so it felt, it feels like Morphine is trying to come for Maya, and Maya is eating her up. Like every time Morphine <laughs> tries to say even the slightest thing, Maya's comeback is better, is quicker, is wittier, and is stronger. It's not and louder, I, but it's definitely a better comeback because <laughs> she like I'm, says I'm, it. She says it like under her breath, and she says it so nonchalant. She's just like, "Okay, well, girl, you can't lip sync anyway." And yeah, it's just like, like what? Well, you would you would have went home with the dress to cut or not? <laughs> I mean, and everybody's just home, like, so everybody's just like, does she, here. does she just say that? Like, and I, I wouldn't be like, my, I'm like morphine girl, stop. You are, you are losing this battle. Like you, you, you are my, every time you try to throw something at Maya is like bobbing, weaving and hitting you with a quick jab. But like, girl, is it, it just up. because Maya is also from Miami? Like, do I don't know. Like, I don't know if they have like a prior like relationship, but like, yeah. I don't know. Maybe, but honestly, I'm living for this new era where Maya is just like I love can't... Maya coming out of her her shell, right? Um, and it feels like the other girls. Okay, so also they're talking about who's who do you see in the top? I don't think the other girls see Dawn as a threat. And to be fair, I don't think Dawn is a threat. <laughs> <laughs> well, in their defense, I don't think Dawn is a, a threat to the win of the, think... of, of Drag Race. At this point, I feel like if you haven't won, like, at least a challenge, it's kind of like... Or, like, really... I mean, no, she excelled at the design challenges. But I feel like if you haven't really done something where it was, like, this was, like, your shining moment, and there's, like, seven people left, it's kind of like, you know... Right? But I do think that she's doing good. I just don't see her doing anything that would, like, make me think she's going to win. The thing about Dawn and Morphine is they're they're both great queens, and no one is denying this. They just Amazing. keep getting bested by someone else. Like every time, like Dawn is a great designer, but oh, there just happens to be two people there who happen to be better than she is almost every single time. And Morphine is a great performer, but there just happens to be two or three people there who are always better than Morphine is in that particular <laughs> challenge. You know, it's we it's it's like, but that's the weird thing about Drag Race. You can literally be the best. And somebody can be one point better than you, and they can take the win. Yeah, it's like wild. Very much that. But yeah, the girls, the girls do not seem threatened by by Dawn at all. They're just like, okay, hey, girl. <laughs> one You're thing I confused. also, it's weird because everybody says that like Plain is like the villain, but Dawn is the one that's stirring the pot every chance she gets. Which I don't know why it's not registering to anybody like what she's saying. But she's literally like, I think you're ugly, and I think you should go home, and I also think you should kill yourself. And it's just like, everybody's like, okay, work. And Plain is like, I didn't love your look. And they're like, she's the devil. Get her out of here. And I wonder what it is. I there, maybe, it's, maybe it's because Dawn delivers it with a smile, so it seems like Sister Shade. And yeah. uh, because Jane delivers it deadpan, it feels like hater shade. Maybe. I think that's probably what it is. But because they're saying the equally as like harsh things to people. But it's hitting differently. Like obviously, obviously, a mandatory meeting had a mandatory meeting was 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 made fun of a, a few times by people, or, or they acknowledged her her aesthetic a few times. Mm -hmm. But something about when Plain did it just did not sit well with her. Oh, Amanda wanted to throw hands. Truly, she said, "Meet me in front a lot too." Literally, after this. Truly. <laughs> um. So 
we, we get back into the workroom the next day, and then um, Q um, says, I've been having some feelings about some of my sisters. <laughs> um, and then, so Dawn and Q are horny, and it feels like Dawn and Q are, like, having salacious thoughts about people in the cast. Who do you think they're thinking about? I would say Plain. To me, Plain is the one in the cast that I see and I'm like, okay, like, she's cute. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, Q's also cute, so maybe they're having them about each other. I don't know. Maybe they're they're, they're fantasizing about one another as well. I just think it's gross. (laughs) (laughs) I just think they're all disgusting. But also, for those of you who don't know, when you're on Drag Race, Typically speaking, unless you're uh, Brooklyn Heights and Vanjie, you're not having sex or kissing or hooking up with Mm -mm. anyone. And if you're there for the long haul, you're there for like two months. So you have two months of just you and your hand. (laughs) That's it. Whatever you can find on like, like Animal Planet. So if you're wondering why the queens are often lusting after these cameramen and you're thinking to yourself, these cameramen look completely average. It's because after a, uh, after all the touch deprivation and the sexual deprivation that you are that you suffer on set and you just want a you don't like you say as a reminder, yo, we don't go to our hotel rooms and call our friends and family. Yeah, no. We don't, we don't go home and, and FaceTime. We don't go to the hotel and FaceTime. You our go friends. there and you sit and you think about how you're either going to win or you're going home. So yes. it's like you don't have like any connection to anybody sometimes not even yourself <laughs> truly so it, it makes sense that the girls are like wanting to c- canoodle and, and fiddle and diddle each other because yeah, it's, it's it happens it's like summer camp um okay so now that so rupaul comes in and says they're going to be doing a um a a, a uh, voting empowerment or voting uh what's what i'm looking for a voting like activation a psa yeah yeah a psa on voting they're trying to they're trying to get people to go out and vote. Um, and I do want to remind you all that you should be voting, especially in your local elections Boots. and in every election you 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 have. And there's absentee ballots are really easy to get. Um, but that being said, Miss RuPaul comes and tells them. And now once they, once they start sitting down and start writing, I noticed that uh, they t- they talk about the fact that Jane's immunity potion is going to expire. This is the epi- this is the week when it goes bad. But this is the thing. I feel like they kind of just nonchalantly was like, and yeah, the immunity potion goes back this week as if they've already talked about it. But this is the first time they've mentioned that it expires this week, I think. No, no, no. A, a few episodes ago, she goes, she said you have three weeks to do it. <gasps> oh, okay. Yeah, a few episodes ago, she had three weeks. To do it. Honestly, I, I, it'd be even more gag if RuPaul was like, now or never, bitch. That would have been even better. Oh, that's what she should have done. Like, in two weeks, she's like, actually, I changed my mind. You have to use it right now. Oh, that would have been so gaggy. That would have been really gaggy. And also, what, uh, I mean, obviously, spoiler alert, what a wasted episode to use it on. Like, what a waste. What a waste. So both immunity potions were wasted. Yeah, I don't think Safira needed hers to use hers that day. And I think nobody needed it today. Nobody needed this because nobody went home. Yeah, literally. Which you, which, I mean, the fans know. I don't love these no one go home episodes. I don't like it either. I never send a bitch home two times, two two, two weeks at a time. (laughs) They were, they I were, love were, when people go home. They were trying to get us out of the studio, honey. Boots. I love. But yeah, I had to go film down under or whatever she had to do. She had to get the I fuck out of there. I love the non-elimination episodes. They're not good. It, it, it takes away the the what makes the show so suspenseful. Is like the stakes of it all. And if there is an non-elimination, there are a few instances where I'm like, oh, thank God. For example, uh, Tatiana and Alyssa Edwards. Something mm-hmm. about that one, that double Shantae was like, that fed my spirit. And uh, then um, Tatiana, no, Tatiana and Alyssa Edwards. And then Roxy Andrews whipping her hair back and forth again. And Alyssa Edwards. Alyssa, oh, Alyssa again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think they don't want to send Alyssa home. <laughs> they do not want to send Alyssa Edwards home. At all, ever. I mean, I she's love. good TV. I understand why. She's great TV and she's a oh. fucking great drag queen. And it's wild because she is just like that in person. Like oh, the yeah. person you see on TV, it's not like a a character. Baby, she's like real. that. She's like that off the screen. Baby, it's for real. Yeah, no, it's, she's wild. Yeah, I love um, her. So okay, you know, I'm trying to think to myself because there's this is this is probably the shadiest episode of the season. These girls mm-hmm. are letting each other have it. Every no girl can get a breath in without another girl <laughs> tearing her down. Literally, no one can crack their lips to even peep without someone being like, "Ugly bitch." 
Pe- Patrick, Patrick, star ass bitch. No, literally, I feel like it's probably just getting to that point of the competition where everybody's like kind of friendly and there isn't really much to fill the air with, especially on an episode where you're writing a verse. You yeah. kind of write the verse and you're just waiting to record it. So they're probably just like, OK, well, let's just, you know, do whatever. Yeah, so they're, they're just being cat with each other. So they're, they're all comparing themselves to SpongeBob characters. And there is a uh, there is a Reddit. Um, what do you call it? a Reddit uh, thread um, where they are, where they have doled out SpongeBob characters to the entire cast of uh, 16. How are they and- like allowed to say the characters on TV? Well, you can you can acknowledge that SpongeBob exists. Not also, true. SpongeBob is also with Paramount as well. Oh, uh, you're right. So they were saying that Nymph- so according to this this thread, which doesn't have a lot of going on, it says that Nymphia is SpongeBob, mm-hmm. Plain Jane is Squidward, Dawn is Plankton. What the fuck is what that? What the hell? Oh, anyway, Dawn is Plankton. <laughs> Safira is Squilliam Fancyson. Who's oh, that? I can see that. It's like Squidward's like nemesis, but like kind of like twin brother, but like not really. He's like Got a it. like an elevated version of Squidward. God, rich. It. They're saying morphine is Pearl, which is really <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> Plasma is Sandy. <laughs> Maya is Gary. <laughs> I feel like Maya is kind of Sandy. Uh, no. Oh, no, Plasma gives Sandy. Plasma, Plasma gives, gives Sandy. Sandy. Yeah, Plasma gives Sandy. And Q is uh, Doodle Bob. And then Mirage and is... Wait, uh, no. Pl- I would say that Plasma is kind of like Doodle Bob. I could see that. I could see that. And then Mirage is Bubble Buddy. Um, but anyway, if you all agree with that, you all should go check out that uh, Reddit user. Their name is uh, Salty Significance 81 That was. I just thought that was a very interesting thread, especially because the girls are being compared to SpongeBob characters. I think um, that's hilarious. So then, oh, I, I am so tickled. Safira is singing the Negro National Anthem to Q. And this is, I don't know why this tickles me so much. Because she's like, maybe you heard the song, Lift Every Voice and Sing. And Q's and just Q's like. face was giving, baby, I've never heard this in my life. <laughs> she's like, you just made that up. <laughs> Q's face was like, oh. Okay. Oh, okay. Who was like, that by? Like, I'll, I'll make sure I go listen to it later. Who who did that one? Also, if you guys care, um, Lift Every Voice and Sing, Negro National Anthem. I, there's a great version over on the Black Queer Town Hall YouTube page sung by Alex Newell. If you want to hear a Black mm-hmm. Queer voice singing Lift Every Voice, 10 out of 10 recommend. It is true. It, it brought me to tears. It truly I think I remember tears. like watching it like live, like during, or like when it ever it, like came out, like yeah, during the, uh, quarantine. Yeah, during, during the, yeah, during Black Queer Town Hall. Yeah, it was honestly, oh my God, did you watch Black Queer Town Hall? Yeah. Oh my God. God. Uh, Girl, I mean, Stan. <laughs> oh my God, I love that. Thank you for watching that. We, we work really hard on that. Um, so, uh, so you can see. Okay, I want to say this: rhyming a word with a word, you can do, mm-hmm. kind of, but it helps to put another word before it that doesn't rhyme. For example, in the song "Bitch Like Me," I go, "A bitch like me is a stunty queen. Guaranteed, you don't really fucking want me, queen. Y'all niggas ain't ready for a cunty queen." You hype is smoking on a blunty queen. So I'm, I'm not really rhyming queen. I'm just saying queen at the end. But I'm saying, right. you know, stunty, want me, um, <clears throat> um, cunty, that kind of thing. Um, and there are instances where I, I don't really mind if the word is rhymed with the word. It but, just has to, like, work. Yeah. And I don't and know I, how well it was working for Maya, if I'm being fully honest. <laughs> no, it did not work at all. But, like, in my head, I was like, she could have... There were so many other options that she yeah. could have just switched one of the words. There's so many words that rhyme with... What word was it? Evil? Equal. 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 Evil. Evil. Sequel. Prequel. Like, gays are not evil. We want to be equal. Something like that. Or it could have been, like, um, we don't, we don't uh, vote, so we don't get a sequel, and our rights should always be equal. Right. It's like she didn't need to rhyme equal with equal. Yeah, I I agree. Um, get the girls but, a thesaurus. Um, but also it's really interesting because she like after she did that, her her line we'll, we'll get there, but her lyrics after that were actually pretty good. I'm like, girl, it seems like you can write decent lyrics. So why why start with something so? I mean, we're gonna get around to starting with a, a bad start to a verse um, when, we, <laughs> when we get to uh, Nifia wins never. Why does Nymphia wins never? Nymphia wind. You guys keep reminding me. It's not winds. It's wind. One wind. Nymphia has one wind. 
Why does Nymphia Wind never know what she's going to She doesn't know what she's going to sew. She doesn't know what she's going to write. She doesn't know what she's going to say. She doesn't know what she's going to wear. She never, ever knows. I don't... It's... I think some people just work like that. Which is a scary, like, reality to have on Drag Race where you have no time to think about anything. You kind of just got to do. But she works off of impulse, like, a lot. It seems stressful. I would be, like, terrified. If right? I, like, just walked in the workroom every day and was like, I don't know what I'm going to wear. I don't know what I'm going to do for this challenge. I don't know what's going to happen. That's terrifying. I need to be, like, ultra prepared. Like, obviously, she knows she's going to wear on the runway for the for the runways that are uh, that are pre-planned. That right. You bring there. But when it comes to designing, it seem, it seem, from what it looks like on TV, it looks like she is literally at the last second just deciding what she's going to do. Or or write it. And the last time she had a writing challenge, she didn't even write her own verse. Megami wrote it. Megami wrote the verse, which is Dawn was like, Well, what are you gonna do now that Megami's not here to write your verse? And she was like, Can you write it? And she was like, No, bro. <laughs> and I will say I this, there learn. is a there is a marked difference between the verse Megami wrote for her and the, and verse, the verse she wrote, that for, she herself. wrote for herself. <laughs> Girl. Honey. We're gonna get there. We're gonna we're, we're still talking about the writing session, but it was wild. So let's go into um so they go in with um with Leland. So Leland, by the way, I genuinely like this song. I like this. I like the bass song. Yeah. We'll probably get to it later, but I do not think that almost any of the verses work with the song. You're not wrong. Like there's except, a like Sephira's works with Sephira's, it because yeah. it's like that kind of James Brown funky type of vibe. But you can't give like a bitch track verse like on this song. It needs a little rhythm and a little groove funk. a little funk. yeah yeah but 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 what leland wrote i really like yeah it. leland's a great songwriter i mean didn't leland write rush he wrote rush and shares like viral christmas song like dj play a christmas song oh work and he also wrote uh obviously the, the probably one of the most successful uh drag race songs which was the uh wig loose oh booth yeah he did my musical and he did all of our girl group stuff um, yeah, he's great. Leland is really, really great. Cause, cause you guys remember, um, she used to use uh, what's his name? Lucian Piani. Lucian Piani, who also wrote great, who, who also oh, wrote really great music. I, say what you want about Lucian, but the Lucian Piani era of Drag Race songs is like iconic. Oh no, Lucian wrote the bops. Glamazonian all- Airways, um, yep. Bitch Perfect. Yep. Cha Cha I- Heels. I think he also wrote, I think he wrote, I think he did the entire album um, that came out, the Realness album. He did. So, like, Lucian really can write. I think Lucian wrote uh, uh, Sissy That Walk. Yeah, Lucian wrote, like, all of that stuff. I, I think, think Lucian wrote, um, um, uh, everything from, like, not, not Glamazon. I think he wrote one, because didn't he write, um, because he's in the video for Bump and Bump It, Bump It, bump and, it and Cover Girl. Cover Girl? Yeah, oh, he's he, been writing for her since then? I think, I mean, he's in the music video. So I think oh, so that then he, he probably wrote it. Yeah, I think he probably wrote that too. So, so yeah, Lucian does struggle with some mental health issues, and I'm not here to judge that. And if, like, you know, I will say something that RuPaul tweeted a while back, I believe is true. If we all knew how fragile our mental health was, you wouldn't judge anyone for having a breakdown, right? If you truly knew how fragile your mental health was, you wouldn't judge anyone. Um, but yeah, Lucian wrote the bops, and I'm just glad that she found another another person who can write as well because because Leland is doing the damn thing, truly. Yeah. And Skeletal Kai, also known as Fred Velvet, like does her like not drag race like music now. And he's really sickening too. So I'm trying to find out. Okay, so Maya, Maya is yelling equal is sending me. Maya's like, (laughs) just because I'm gay doesn't make me less equal. Equal! (laughs) (laughs) It's like that's the one thing that like I know he was like put emphasis on the equal, but like damn bitch, you we got it equal. Like you don't gotta yell it in my face. I I wish they kept that one. Her going make me less equal. That <laughs> sent me into orbit. No, Call it me was, the James Webb telescope because the bitch I'm in orbit. It was it was crazy. Yeah, that was that was so great. Um, and by the way, so this is the shadiest I think in in the 16 seasons. I have never seen girls reading other girls while they're <laughs> in their confessionals. Uh, this harshly ever i have never this seen is real getting dragged like this the only person who did not get harsh critiques for for both uh jamal and leland was safira yeah they because after safira went 
Jane said, this makes me want to go to the polls and vote. Right. And then she was for everybody else. She was like, this is making me want to, you know, leave the country. <laughs> Yeah, like, yeah, like, like, like I, I believe that maybe we should have a dictatorship. Maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe we should. Maybe voting was not the right choice. Maybe it's time for a dictatorship. A booth. Um. So, so, uh, Nymphia is just like, <clears throat> she's, she's, she's not her, her. I don't know what she has written. It kind of seems like she was just like writing down whatever like word came to mind and wrote it down and was like, this is the first. But it's like there's so much space and between see, her words this is the thing i feel like some people put too many words in their verse she put like one word in her verse which is yeah. like she could have just filled it in a little more i mean wait till we show you all <laughs> jacob do we tend to show them the uh the lyrics on the screen when we read them or do they just i can't remember uh generally we don't well, maybe this time we will because there's it's, five it's, words on this page. <laughs> the difference between Nymphia's and everyone else's is honestly wild, but maybe not. It's not important. So let's let's keep on going through the. Uh, so Wait, can, uh, you, can you do a dramatic reading of Nymphia's verse for us? I'll, I'll do it when we get to her, her. When we get to the when we get to the that part of the show for sure. But I, I want to try to go in order. But yeah, I, but I am incredibly interested in doing that. Yes. Um. So also, uh, Dawn is wild. Telling, telling plain Jane. To tell Nymphia that she's going to give her the potion and not is maniacal. It's it's that thing where it's like she's doing it with a smile. So it's just like, oh, Dawn, you're so silly. But she's fully like, no, sabotage her. Which I kind of would have did. But I wouldn't have said it. <laughs> Which I will say, it is great TV. Like, if oh, she so would have done that, it, it, if she would have said to, to, to Nymphia pulled her aside and said, I'm going to give you this potion because I, I really believe in you and, and you are a strong competitor. And I want to be on camera. Guy. And I, yeah, and I want to be in the top with the top queens. So I love you, sis. Go yellow. I love you so much. <laughs> you're my, you're my yellow fellow. Like you're my everything. You're my hero. And then on stage, and then on stage, when she it was her time, she takes the cap off and just pours and just says, "I can't think ground. of a single person I want to give this to right now." <laughs> pours it onto the ground and says, "Don't slip on the banana peel, bitch, honey." Um, but. But I wouldn't do that. My, I, I, I don't think I, ha- I don't think I have what I'm. I can be manipulating and and cruel in, in television, but not that, not like that. I could not do that. That would, I would feel bad doing. That. What I would have done with the immunity potion, I would have, I would have used it to block someone else from getting a win. So like, if I, I knew, Sa- if I, if I knew Safira did the best, I would give it to Safira so she's automatically safe. And even if I knew that I didn't do the second best, it's still another win that she wouldn't have. I've heard about this theory and it's very smart. And that would have been that actually that would have been the gaggiest TV. That would have been the gaggiest moment of the season if Jane had done that. Because I am gagged that she gave that she ended up giving it to Nymphia, but that would have been ult- the ultimate. That's what game. I would have that would have been like that would have been like top ten most shocking moments. So let's talk about Q. Um the captions say off key in print <laughs> when she's saying the captions literally say off key. <laughs> And the second time, the captions say, dramatic, off-key vocalizing. And that's exactly what it was. It was it was wild. But it's funny because she was like, oh, yeah, I'm like a theater kid. Maybe, like, pantomime theater or, like, like miming. But, like, I don't think that she is a vocalist in any essence of the word. She was like, can I sing? Baby, I'm Adina Menzel. She can vocalize. She but was she's like, not I a vocalist. Sing? I'm Ariana said, Grande, baby. She said, baby, Whitney Houston is flowing through my veins right now. <laughs> <laughs> and she believed it. And she, she believed, believed it. it. She was committed to the bit. And I can respect that. But come on, you gotta, you gotta hear what you're you gotta hear what you're saying a little bit. But also the other part of me is like, girl, I know I have never heard them let a girl sound bad on a recording. They will, they will auto-tune you within an inch of your life. Oh, they will fix you up. They will so get honestly, you together. Going, which is kind of weird because like is that fair to the ones who can sing because like they don't they don't they don't fix your dancing in post yeah they no, don't, they they don't. don't. if you mess up the moves costume. they're showing it yeah they, they they don't they don't they don't have someone come in and fix your costumes if your costumes are bad well, so is it fair to the girls who sing if you can't sing and they fix your voice i do think that's a little i wouldn't love that especially somebody who can sing because then it's like they're gonna listen to it because the judges aren't 
like listening to the recording process, they're listening to the final product. So if yeah. I know I just sang down and they're going to fix you to make you look like you sang down, I'm going to be like, well, that's not really a fair assessment because it's the robot singing for her, not her. I agree. I think, I mean, I think there should be some auto tuning a little bit, but, but if it's to the point where you're, I will say this, when me, Eureka and Shangela were on the show, we're here the first season, our, our, um, our, uh, poster me and Shangela look like we're the same height <laughs> now i don't care obviously if you also you know Shangela's, i think five five maybe I think she's, she's, a, five she's five. a short diva i'm six foot two but they made it look like me and Shangela <laughs> were the same height <laughs> and she's only wearing those what eight inch pleasers yeah it's not that much. Like, y'all, y'all trying to level the playing field a little too much <laughs> yeah let her let's let's keep it back to reality um so let's go on to Jamal Sims. So now they are rehearsing with Jamal Sims and the girls. I'm telling you, they're in heat. Y'all, you cannot bring a sexy shirtless man, a sexy shirtless daddy. They, they know what they're doing. They waited. They waited till the 10th episode and bought a shirtless, sexy daddy. Not just a man, a daddy in, 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 in a position of authority telling them what to do. Girl. It's like the pit stop. Not the pit stop. Um, Like the pit crew. They just have them coming in randomly naked and then the cameras have to like reset so they're just standing there and everybody's just like you, you literally like, y- y'all don't get it you're literally just staring and then you're like can i stare at these guys hey, <laughs> or like stare. is it gonna like make stare. them like uncomfortable but you gotta do what you gotta do you gotta do what you gotta do you gotta do what you gotta do uh based off of um what the girls are wearing i cannot tell if this room is hot or cold nymphia when is, is in like a- she's in like three like puffer coats yeah three and then Plain Jane is in like a t-shirt. I'm like, is it is it 80 degrees? Is it 30 degrees? Which, well, wait, plain, Jane is, plain Jane is like Russian and it's cold in Russia. So maybe Bruce she's used me. to it. Yeah. And, and then she moved to Boston, which is not known for being warm either. Mm-hmm. So she, she, she's like, she's like, I'm in heaven. To me, this is literally just another Thursday. <laughs> and it probably was Thursday. I wish she would speak Russian on the show. She's not spoken. I, I do she, too. Has she spoken Russian yet? I don't even think she, the closest she's spoken to like a Russian like dialect was when she did Snatch Game, and that was a uh, uh, Serbian yeah. accent. Yeah, which I I was I spoke to somebody and I was like, oh yeah, I spoke to somebody who was like Serbian or something or Russian, and they were like, no, it's not Russian, it's Serbian, and I was like, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> It's Eastern European. Let's just say that it's Eastern Wait, European. We have a, I have a podcast review to review uh, to um, read off this topic. This is okay. a one star review we got on the Sibling Rivalry podcast <sighs> iTunes. Okay, Yelena is Serbian. <laughs> Love the pod, but please learn the difference between Serbia and Russian. It's very disrespectful to have mistaken Yelena as Russian when Jane, who is of Russian ethnicity, played the Serbian pop star. Go off. <laughs> Thank you so very much for your input. I now, I to be clear, I, 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 you know, I, I, I had not heard of Yelena. I'm sure she's. A I very follow her on lady. Instagram. How long have you been following her? I've been following her for like years. Yelena, I, I'm I didn't even know she made music. I just thought she was like some woman who just like wore like really sickening outfits. Now I gotta fucking find Yelena. Um, I, I, I love that for you, Yelena. I think there her Instagram is. is like Carly Usa or something like that. Yeah, Car Carlu Star, Carlu Star Star or something like that. No, the looks are kind. Of, she she's really out here in these streets. Out Honestly, here in these streets, really wearing absolutely nothing. Sometimes, yeah, literally. Um, so let's get back to the rehearsal. So during this uh, dance <laughs> rehearsal, I, I really feel like Maya and Safira are the only are the only ones who are not struggling. Like literally, yeah. the only ones. But I mean, we saw in the girl group, like this is what Maya like excels at. Like this is this is what she good at. She can't sew and she can't really like act or sing, but like choreography and like being like a girl group. <laughs> but you can't sew. You can't sing. You can't act. But this listen, I don't care if you made your outfit and I don't care if you can't act. When I go and see a show, I want to see you know, a diva being a diva, but this is Drag That's Race. True. So I want to see true. you doing everything. because No one's going to deny race. that Maya is a remarkable performer. She is oh, really... One of the best to ever be on the show, I think. I agree. I agree. I was jealous. 
but I am a cat person and I'm very proud of it because cats are great companions, okay? Cats bring joy, they bring love, they bring life. So the least I can do is feed my kitty the best cat food money can buy because cats want variety in their diet just like we do. Nobody want to eat the same old nasty kibble every day. Ew, it's gross. My cat's old food would stink, stank, stunk. So I used to dread every time I had to feed her girl. The old food was boring. It looked gray. And I could see Miss Colleen losing interest until we found Smalls. If you're a listener of the show, you know my kitty does not live without her Smalls, honey. Smalls cat food is protein-packed recipes made with preservative-free ingredients you'd find in your refrigerator. And it's delivered right to your door. So make it your New Year's resolution to get your cat eating healthier with Smalls. Now, the reason why Monet says I'm jealous because she's actually jealous because she knows that actually Colleen likes me more than she likes her. And it is embarrassing when I come over and I'm actually the one who recommended Smalls to her. Me and Colleen had a conversation. We were just listening to some podcasts together. Now, Smalls was started back in 2017 by a couple of guys home cooking cat food in the small batches for their friends. And a short year later, a few short years later, they served high quality meals to millions of cats around the world. After making the switch to small, 78% of cat owners reported their cats had shinier and softer fur. And then 90% reported overall healthy improvements. That's a big deal. I mean, Colleen's a hairless cat with hair. I'm not saying it's Smalls, but I'm not saying it's not. The team at Smalls is so confident you will love their product. You can try it risk-free. That means they will refund you if your cat won't eat the food. Okay, got it. It's 2024, y'all. Are you still feeding your cat kibble? Head to smalls.com slash rivalry and use promo code rivalry at checkout for 50% off your first order plus free shipping. That's the best offer you'll find, but you have to use our code rivalry for 50% off your first order. One last time, that's promo code RIVALRY for 50% off your first order plus free shipping. No matter how you're starting off your year, when you use the Secure Chime Credit Builder Visa Credit Card, you can build your credit scores with on-time payments for everyday purchases. Plus, there's no annual fee or credit check to get started. With a Chime checking account, you can get paid up to two days earlier. With qualifying direct deposit, you can get access to your money sooner. Chime offers fee-free overdraft with SpotMe. Overdraft up to $200 without fees with SpotMe when you set up a qualifying direct deposit. Ditch the monthly fees. Chime has no monthly minimum balances or overdraft fees. Chime gives you access to 60,000 plus fee-free ATMs. That's way more than the top three national banks combined and easily find one near you using the Chime app. Start building your credit. Open a Chime checking account with at least $200 qualifying direct deposit to get started. Get started at Chime.com slash Rivalry. That's Chime.com slash Rivalry. The Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card is issued by the Bancorp N.A. and Stride Bank N.A. members FDIC. Out-of-network ATM withdrawal and over-the-counter advance fees may apply. Call 1-844-244-6363 for details. Late payments may negatively impact your credit score. Results may vary. Early access to direct deposit funds depend on the payer. Spot me eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. So let's, so also, um, okay, I have a question for you. Can okay. you do the, these moves, to me, they do not seem hard. The, 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 um, the chicken head bop that she was doing. I don't think I, I feel like I've tried and I don't think my body just like, it's like a coordination thing. I just don't have that in me. Or how about the move that uh, the 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 kick turns that uh, oh, Blaine Jane was doing? I can do those. I think that's what they do in Drag Race Vegas. They oh, do, do they? that move in Drag Race Vegas, I think. But I can do that one. And Plain Jane, by the way, she did not. She wasn't able to do it. They, they cut it. I don't know if you guys clocked that. They cut it from the number. She never did it. <laughs> they probably they were probably like give her something like hard, and then they cut the cameras. And like, okay, this is the actual choreography. Yeah, very probably very much that. I wish they would have kept it though, because I do love that move. I think it's a really fierce move. Yeah. During the makeup, uh, Dawn opens up to uh, Nymphy about her struggles with mental illness, um, which I think is really important. And I love that mm-hmm. she was able to like talk about that. I feel like sometimes someone pointed something out recently on Reddit, and yes, I'm on Reddit all the time. Um, in this comment, it was like uh, it was about it was about um, it was a video of me and Monet talking about. A mandatory readings, a mandatory meeting response to plain Jane. And mm-hmm. they were like, and a lot of the comments kept being like, 
Amanda should be thankful that Jane even gave her screen time because if it wasn't for Amanda, if it wasn't, if it, wasn't if it was if it wasn't for Jane, Amanda would literally have been forgotten and no one would even know who she is. So the well, reason why we, the reason we even know Amanda is because Jane gave her that screen time. And then one of the comments was like, "You guys are. I think sometimes you guys talk about these drag queens as if they're characters on a TV show and not people. And they are not real emotions people. and feelings. Like they're like they're not." characters in game of thrones they are very very real people having very very real experiences and i think that <clears throat> someone being like this was really hard for me like probably the hardest thing i've ever done and for someone to be like no you're dramatic that's crazy to me yeah it's like i sometimes like will watch drag race and not think about the fact that it's an actual person but I very soon come to reality and it's like, oh, I've been in that situation. I know that you are literally just a regular person in front of a camera. You don't have a script. You don't have like a, this is what you're doing. This is who you are. You're just being yourself. And that's why I think it was kind of so hard for me, like getting like backlash and stuff on the season because like people don't hate me for being a character. Like people don't hate my character. People hate me. So it's like, wow, like what am I... Like, what am I to do about that? Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, but, but, and, but that's not what Dawn was talking about. I was, I was talking about how that does affect a lot of the girls. I, I mean, a lot of the girls from Drag Race do talk about how it really affects their mental health because of the wild things that the fans <laughs> say about them. Um, and on Dawn's note, I'm really glad that she is talking about mental health and how important it is because, y'all, we are all just out here trying to make it. And I feel like Drag Race brings the, the like brings the topic up a lot on the show, and I don't think the fans like internalize like that it's an actual conversation being had by actual people. They're just like, oh, Drag Race is doing the mental health thing again, and it's like, no, I think they're really trying to like emphasize that like everybody is going through something. Yeah, I'm sure you're also going through something, so it's like just give a little. A little yeah, less. imagine whatever um, whoever's listening to this, imagine whatever you're going through right now. Imagine whatever you're going through right now. Imagine that thing, that thing you that you're struggling with, and now you have to go on drag race. Yeah. But that thing's still happening. And now you're preparing for drag race. And, and then, then you now have you're to come back drag, home. And, and now you you're on drag race. <laughs> yeah, and that thing is still happening. And you just you're just accumulating all of that while also you get a drag race and now you're like fighting strangers, people you didn't even know a week ago. And Michelle Visage. It's like you and, just like it's like you just, it's a crazy, like, it's a crazy thing. Not Anna Michelle Vassar. <laughs> um, okay, so um, also, so then Nymphia goes over and starts, uh, I'm going to use the word begging. Begging. <laughs> Playing Jane for this fucking immunity potion. I think it's, I think Nymphia has like a certain charm to her where she can kind of get people to do things that she wants them to do for her. And I think that it's kind of working. But it's also, called manipulation. I, <laughs> I didn't want to call it that because sometimes I feel I have that same charm. So I didn't want to call it manipulation because Another red I don't. Flag. I don't think we need to take it there. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't think we need to take it there. Let's okay. Let's say convincing. She's very convincing. Yes, she is very charming. convincing and charming. And I think it's kind of working. I think Plain is kind of seeing that she really is coming to ask for help, and I think that plain isn't used to people in the competition coming to her with an ounce of like sincerity and like actual like please help me because everybody thinks she's yeah. like a nasty rotted person and she knows that so let's go over to uh the the google drive photo we sent you with the, with the verses in it <laughs> mm -hmm. and we're going to read these verses all right let's start with the looks and with the verses so dawn dawn's wearing this like black sequin um kind of like stirrups and like a loose fitting stirrups and a loose fitting top with a looks like a uh cheetah print panty and mm -hmm. honestly she looks good it, does, it doesn't look terribly funk she doesn't no. look funky i would have lined the sequin on the, like the stirrup or the chap because you can see that it's like a like a really sheer sequin i would have lined it Tracker. <laughs> that's about it though I, I do like the look yeah she says y'all ready for a therapy session here we go we got the power. Being true to love will always make them cower. Writing up laws won't stop our wild. Won't stop our wild. Healing our inner, inner child. Uh, who you are cannot be tamed. So embarrassed. So embarrassed. Do not be bear their shame. 
connect your connect use your privilege make a change it takes a village that child in you can put up a fight too she's really reaching out to baby dawn boots or morning it's ve- yeah it's very like i like her lyrics a lot because they're it's like just straight to the point true to the situation and it's yeah, not I like agree. it's not being like there's not much like conflama in the verse it's kind of just this is what it is and this is what we need to do I agree. I don't. I do, I do not think Don has a voice for this type of music, though. No, and the flow, <laughs> it was very. Um, it just didn't work for me. But that's like every like half the cast is white now, so I don't think it's gonna like. Yeah, giving up her power. Make and power. she like yeah, she talks like a quirky little like keyboard elf person, and it's just like it doesn't feel right with the song. And also, Which is her I think, vibe. Her vibe is to be an elf, so that's not like a reed. That's that's yeah, that's her. her vibe. That's her. That's her. That's her. Tea, I mean, she's you know? literally wearing elf ears, boots. I do also think that the flow of the verse, it seemed like she was trying really hard to fit all of the things in the like the eight count or like the bars. Mm-hmm. Like she was trying to pack everything in, and it kind of got a little like jumbled and weird flow yeah. wise. But I I think that's the case with a lot of the verses. I agree. Um, so let's go on to uh, our next contestant, who is Maya Amon LePage. So, uh, okay, M- Michelle didn't like this outfit. I I think she looks kind of cute, to be honest. I mean, it's, it's, a, I it's like dance- the outfit. Yeah, I like the outfit. Costume. What's wrong with it? I do think that the hair does give me Oompa Loompa tees a little bit, but that's that's fine. Well, it's- I guess. I think because she's short and stout. If she was like, t- if she was like Naomi Smalls, you would never call her Oompa Loompa. But because she is short and stout, you're and she's and she's wearing green hair. You're like Oompa Loompa. It's like your brain just does it before you get a chance to even say, do anything about it. You know what I mean? I don't think that she should, proportion wise, unless it's really strategically placed, ever wear a turtleneck, or like something that comes this high and this like cut off her neckline because it does just make her look like. One like if tall. she's if she's this tall, it shrinks her down to like this height. But yeah. other than that, I think it's I think it's fine. It's a dance costume. I agree. Living in a country where our rights should be equal, just because I'm gay doesn't make me less equal. <laughs> Let's take a chance to make a difference. We've got the power. Let's use our voices. Don't let them win. Let's keep going. Martin Luther Queen. Martin Luther King. I have a dream. Real missed opportunity to call yourself Martin Luther Queen. I'm just gonna throw that out there. Yeah. A huge missed opportunity to call Martin yourself Luther Martin Luther Queen. Queen. That would have like, been sick thing. But what do I know? Um, and um, and it's equal and equal. There's so many other words you could have used. Yeah, listening to it, it didn't bother me so much in the thing, but maybe because I was I was prepped for it. Because I will say, whenever I um, whenever I hear it without being prepped, I don't want to hear it first. It shocks me. Like like back when Candy Muse says, "Yo, the muse the muse is, is back. back. You better so watch your back. back." And these souls better watch their back. <laughs> I was like, that <laughs> okay. That wasn't um, it. Yeah, maybe I was I was primed for it. But I and I actually I think I may have I don't think these any of these lyrics are particularly great, to be honest. But, yeah. But she did but she but her performance was really good and her flow was was pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um she did a really good job. Just they're not they're just not great lyrics. Yeah, I think she had one of like the better like flows for the song and it kind of worked better with the song but i think it was just like kind of like her voice and her inflection she had like soul and like at least a little bit of for lack of a better word like color (laughs) how she was saying it let's go on to morphine this was great yeah for me out of the gate out of the gate morphine looks great she is wearing Dawn's hair. I mean, Plain Jane's hair, which we'll talk about during Untucked. Um, so maybe Plain Jane's not the bitch she says she is. Or I, I feel like she's like, I don't know. She's a weird one for me, but I kind of live. Um, but yeah, she looks really, really good. Uh, I don't actually, I don't love this outfit. Um, but I don't hate it. Does that make any sense? Like, I, if I saw it, I'd be like, oh, hey, girl. Like, I wouldn't think, I wouldn't be like, girl, you ate. Or be like, damn, you see what Morphine's wearing? I, I'd be like, oh, Morphine's wearing an outfit. I think the thing that I don't like is the nude illusion is to not nude, but tan. So it kind of looks like silver and gold. And then the all silver shoe, it kind of just like, 
breaks it up like in a weird place for me. The noodle like, illusion, t- is, it doesn't look like a noodle. It doesn't look like a noodle. It looks like illusion. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah that's um, the yeah. only thing I don't like. It looks like tan fabric, not like noodle illusion fabric. It's too much yeah, warm and cool. Her verse, though, because her verse was honestly <laughs> great. I got my place in the front lines. I got that heat that inspires. I got my space in the hard times. I got that beat that desire. I got that drag that they ban on. I got that skin with the armor. I got mm-hmm. the ballot to write on. You know you can't take my power. Y'all better get up, get up and mother tuck and vote because it's getting serious up in here. She was great. That's the, was to great. me, that was like the best verse of the night. Oh, so good. She so ate So good. <clears throat> she tore. I'm going to the polls after this. Yeah, literally. That's right. That made me want to get up and go to the poll. That made me want to go to the poll. Um, yeah, no, she she did a good job. She, her her verse was great. Let's go on to Nymphia. Okay. Are the judges gonna say anything about the bananas? I feel like if it was anybody else, they would be like, girl, the bananas, we have a potassium overload at the moment. Like, I feel like Dawn did her makeup like three times and, and Michelle was like, She wore change elf ears it, twice fag. and they said change your makeup she, bag. She said, burn those elf ears right now or you're out of here next week. Like, literally. And then she's been a banana like, every week and they're like, I don't I don't see what y'all are talking about. <laughs> like what do you what do you mean? I, I, you know, I, I've never noticed that she says but I've never even known. I never knew those were bananas. bananas. Huh, she does wear yellow. Yellow? Oh yeah, I guess she does wear yellow. I guess that That's is crazy. yellow. But it's why every challenge, everything, there will be a banana. If she's not wearing a banana, she's holding a banana, it. singing about a banana, talking about a banana, eating a banana, drawing pictures on bananas, talking to bananas. It's it's just bananas, you know? I feel like she's going to get really annoyed at how many bananas that she's getting. Y'all, do, if you go to Nymphia's show, bring her money. Do, do not, not bring, bring her, her bananas. bananas. Because why didn't I tell you this, they're going straight in the trash because you cannot, nobody's going to travel with that. Also, I don't eat food from fans. Oh, absolutely not. Not eat. Y'all do not eat food from fans. How much if is a it's bush like, from fans? If it's like packaged, like I will eat them. Like if it's like packaged candy, I'm eating it. Someone bought me one someone bought me a Ziploc bag full of cherry starbursts because I said on Instagram Live one time that they were my favorite. And I think that is the best gift that I've ever gotten from a fan. Well, I a fan once took me to a fan once took me over to um, the pizza cart outside of Oil Candy Harry's in Texas to get pizza, but they didn't bring the pizza to me. And honestly, that was one of my favorite interactions I've ever had with a fan where I was taken to get my pizza. It honestly felt really nice. But yeah, I looked it up. A bushel of bananas. The prices seem to vary, but I know you can get you can get twelve pounds of bananas for eighty seven dollars. And why do you um, need twelve pounds of bananas? A, a bananas are uh, two twenty nine uh, for two pounds or something, but you could just take that money that you would spend and the gas money and the time while you're getting and a banana and just hand her give money. Give her the money; it'll be a lot more significant, and impactful. Put the, put the money in a banana envelope. Make an envelope that looks like a banana, and then give her that. But don't give her organic, real bananas, y'all. Give this girl yeah. motherfucking money. It's a waste. It's a What's waste of your time and hers. Let's go to her her look. Even though the banana thing is wild, she honestly looks amazing. Yeah, she looks pussy. It's so good. This outfit is so great for this. I just I I can't. Now let's go into this verse. Ooh, it's windy. Aspire to community. Nymphia for equality. Do not ban my beauty you better get the power within your flower have a seat at the table when you vote yellow i want to talk about something i don't, I don't think a single wendy... word in this rhymes yeah thank <laughs> you i don't think wendy rhymes with community i don't think equality rhymes with beauty with beauty power does rhyme with flower but i don't understand what that means by what? get the power within your within flower. Like, your is flower that, is your ass the flower oh. well sort of kind of I mean, maybe that's what she means. Maybe she's like, use your hole to convince. Or like, Daddy is your f- is your flower like your like your inner like lotus? I don't know. I, honestly, this, and this the is, fact that we have to think about it that hard, it's not. This is legit one of the worst verses ever written on Drag Race. I'm, I'm just or gonna probably go ahead and call like it. ever. 
No, it's not the worst. I mean, there have, there have been worse verses. There have been worse verses, but this is like bottom ten for sure in all of the challenges of across yes. every platform. This one is this one's pretty. Well, there have down been there. some really bad ones, and this is now. I want to acknowledge that I, I do not know. I do. I, I'm assuming that Nymphia wins first language is not English. Um, yeah, I would assume so. She like was born and raised in like Taiwan. Yeah. But also, I want to say too that uh, that there's a lot of queens who's who uh who on Drag Race who do not speak English as a first language. There's obviously, I mean, a, a lot of the Puerto Rican queens um, on Drag Race. Um, we've had queens from Africa. Um, one of them won Drag Race. I don't, uh, you know what I mean? Um, right. From Cameroon and from uh, you know different places. Monet Exchange. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, there are tons of people who. Um, so I don't know that, that that's a necessarily a excuse. I don't think so. And obviously, Nifia Wynn speaks perfect English. Nifia Wynn yeah. speaks perfect. She speaks English. She speaks better English than me most of the time. Yeah, like, yeah she speaks perfect. So I, I, I'm not going to give her that big of a pass on that, to be honest. Let's go on to uh, Plain Jane, uh, Miss Janie for Nasty. This outfit is pretty good. I like this outfit. What do you think of it? I like the outfit. I don't know if I like the shoe with that. I agree with you on that. The shoe is not great. She mm-hmm. does this kind of silhouette a lot, though. That Which, I mean, true. if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But I feel like every kind of girl group or challenge where you're not wearing a runway, she's wearing this outfit in a different color. She's low-key giving Erica Jane a little bit. She does give me Erica Jane. <gasps> right? Wait. She, yes. <laughs> she says, Miss Jane, if you're nasty, love that out of the bat. Yeah, I've got the power, and I'm, and, and I'm going to have to use it. They're coming for our freedom, and bitch, I'm gonna lose it. Their ignorance is strong. We gotta flex, spreading the love like we're spreading my legs. Drag it up and fight for what's right. No great battle can be beaten overnight. So groove to the beat and, and tell hate to kick rocks. And if you um and if you at the polls, you can catch this box. Um, honestly, these are solid lyrics. I, I think, think it's a good. job. I think it's a she good did, verse. She did pale in comparison to Nymphia when they were dancing side by side, but it wasn't like a ten and a one. It was yeah. like a it was like a nine and a seven. I don't think that like I f- until they mentioned it, I didn't really clock that Jane was messing up the choreography as much as she was because like I yes yes Nymphia did better than her, but I don't think like Nymphia was giving like Lori and Gibson level like dance like extraordinariness. Yeah. You know, I think she was doing the movements, but I think they both were like, you know. Yeah, I agree. I think that they were being a little harsh on on Jane, to be honest. I, was, I felt like they they I felt like they kind of wanted to take her down a peg, or they wanted to scare her, or some, or scare her into using that immunity potion, or some. I don't know what the fuck they were they were trying to do, but I was like, I don't think she was that bad. I think she actually did a, I think she did a very solid job. But when she was on her own, she was gr- genuinely great. Yeah, I thought it was a, definitely like a safe performance. Let's go into Q. I need what to is find this out. wig? I need to find out if Ross Matthews wears glasses what is this wig what (laughs) and what is any of this she said that q outfit was the best outfit of the week of the week this outfit in the challenge better than anything on the runway and better than anything anyone else wore that's lies and fallacies this is it's not ugly but it's not stunning you know it's i agree it's like not a bad outfit but it's not like the best of the week and I hate this wig. Yeah, it's not, I hate it's not it. great. It's not great. I just cannot believe that that Ross said that. I was like, what is what is going on? What, I don't know. What? Q says, yeah, here we was... go, here we, here we go, here we go. Get down with me. If you want to make a change, get up and sing. Now we all now we all live in a crazy place. We're all the same. We're, we're all the same, but we need our space. Fighting for the right to live. Keep my man, keep my man and ha- save the kids. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> if you ain't loud if you ain't loud then then how can you hear fight to be proud because uh fight to be proud and fight because we're real cast your vote and tell the ones above take your power and spread the love um tell the ones really... above kind of seems like telling people in heaven like yeah, whatever like, that or, is or like god or like angels. yeah do you remember when utica like like uh oh my gosh she like her um phenomenon versus like my lord and savior i love god 
Spreading love from here to there for my savior while I toss my, my hair. hair. Was, was no, no, we're going to, like, to the top. We're going to the top. Sorry, did she just say for my? Sa- that was <laughs> honestly. Shout out to all the Christians. Shout out to all the Christians. Uh, boots. But I was like, that was honestly a bold move for Dragon. <laughs> bold move, truly a bold move. Boots. Let's go on to Safira Crystal, who looks. Respect. Stunning. She she looks stunning. This look is simple, but it works so well. She looks so fucking beautiful. Her body looks great. I feel like they Bo- never this is body, body like wow. They never talk about her body on the show, which is weird to me because her body, her padding is so yeah. Her shape is so good. good, and her pad like her tights match like perfect. These boobs look real. I think Are that's because these- you can't see the other side of them. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was say, are these the same boots from the first episode? Because I don't know if she got new titties or what. Because the first titties were quite wild, but these they have to be. But I think it's because here you can't see that they're like they stop like at her nipples. Yeah, halfway through her body. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She goes, I'm, "I'm I'm American, bleed red, white, and blue. Got the freedom to love so much, so much love for you. And if we lift every voice together and use our power in that booth, we can stand whatever we can. We can stand whatever the weather. Make them see we know the truth." And the truth is, we got the power. And then she does some choreography. Um, and, she, and she goes into the chorus. Um, I think this verse was great. It was more about her, the fact that she sang it in, the, in a funk. It wasn't about the lyrics. It was about the way yeah. she sang it. And honestly, going from a split to a squat, jumping into a squat w- without using your hands. I don't know if cunt. I could do that. That's a sick thing. I, and I like, yeah, I can do a split. Obviously. I mean, not obviously. So, listen, there was a period of time where I did not have it, but <laughs> but now I I'm back to splitting and kicking and stuff. Hey, so you hoes better watch out during All Stars too, because Mama's splitting and kicking. <laughs> um, let's go on to the runway, shall we? I love RuPaul's dress. I, I the only thing I do not like about it is the shoe. I wish the shoe was blue or a color or even red. I don't like that it's a black shoe. For a drag, shoe is always an afterthought. And apparently, even Not for, for the highest in the land, shoes will always... Be. Drag queens will spend thousands. Drag queens will spend thousands Th- of thousands dollars. Thousands of dollars on an outfit, and they're wearing the same pleaser pump that they've been wearing for two years. Literally. Stuff they will taped on the back. <laughs> truly, hundreds of dollars on a wig, thousands of dollars on an outfit. They would get custom nails. They will hire a photographer. They will, they will book these gigs. And then they will show up in a busted, dusty, crusty And the shoe doesn't heel. have, like, a shoe tab on it. It's just, like, the little metal piece on the end. I have a couple of those, baby. <laughs> oh, Mama, oh, I wore one last night. <laughs> believe. Trust and believe I have a couple of those. Trust and believe, Mama. But, yeah, um, this outfit is everything. I'm obsessed yeah. with it. The hair, Sonny the flower, the makeup. It's everything. I love Michelle's yeah. socks. Yeah, Michelle looks cute, and um, actually, all of them look cute. I think Ross's outfit looks really cute. Ross looks yeah, great. That top was probably five hundred dollars. Say again. Web- I said that top was probably five hundred dollars on his website. Does he sell tops like that? I think so. And like um, those like glitter bomber jackets that he wears, he sells them. They're like his collection. Interesting. Um, Jamal looks amazing. Yeah, Stunning. everyone looks good. There's there's no flops on the judges panel this week for sure. I think Jamal Sims and RuPaul could be related. Look at them. Uh, I've never given any consideration. I have, I have to ponder like, on that. Like Rue out of drag and Jamal, they look like they could be t- like they look like they could be cousins. I think that you're just looking at two bald guys. Maybe <laughs> I think you're looking at two, two two bald black guys who are similar in complexion. I um, think that's why we they say that we could be twins. <laughs> you and I are, who's, who's twins? You? <laughs> Lux, I love. You. Don't let people do you like that. Okay, I love you very much. Don't, no, don't they they never do. they never do that. They never do that. Okay, all right. Not not too much. Not too much from you. All right. <laughs> Listen. Um, let's go on to uh, Maya and Mon LePage. Uh, this looks great. The only thing I don't like about this look is that that those tiny itty bitty baby feathers on her butt. Yeah, I didn't eat those. If you were gonna do feathers, like do it to where you can see it from the front. Yeah. <laughs> But those little baby feathers were a weird choice. She looks good though. I mean, this is a, this is a pretty standard pageant gown, but it is it is very well done though. Yeah, she looks stunning. Yeah, I agree. Let's go on to uh. So, oh, the category is true colors, and when they announced that, so I obviously mine was wearing red. Um, I don't think anyone is shocked that Nymphia came. I literally I was watching my friends last time. I said, what what color do you guys think Nymphia's gonna wear? 
Nivea came out in yellow. She looks, she does look great. This, I'm, I'm just saying, is getting a little bit absurd. Yeah, like every, like this is really similar to the, her first runway look, the like reveal yourself. Yeah, like it's very similar, and I don't know why they haven't like clocked. I feel like if it was anybody else, they would be like, you just wore that a couple of days ago. Yeah, is is Nivea Loki getting away with murder? I think so. But she's, and like, she, so stunning. I don't think you even, like, focus on it. But she's also not getting a particularly great uh, edit either. Maybe it's because she's not offering them a lot of content to Yeah, to it's kind of, like, the middle just, of the road. She's barely in this fucking show. I don't think that at the moment, and I was talking to... I don't remember who I was talking to about this, but I don't think that anyone has a clear, like, winner edit. I agree. I think the only person who is heavily featured in every episode is plain. Like, there's been episodes where Safira... But it's not a winner's edit, though. No. She's just heavily featured. There's been episodes where Safira is barely in the episode, Nymphia is barely in the episode. Like, there's episodes where all of the girls are kind of there sporadically. I don't think anybody has, like, a, oh, this is the clear winner edit. Like, all we know about Nymphia is we know where she's from, we know what she likes to eat, and we know that she is never... And she, we know that she can't make up her mind about perform- what she's going to do. And, and she can, and she can sell. <clears throat> yeah, and then when it comes to Safira, all we know is that she likes to help people. She's pretty good at sewing. She sings opera. And she has. Oh, we, we did find out. We did find out personal about her about her father. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess we did find some stuff in there about about her. But that being said, this outfit, judging on it, just as a, the outfit itself, not based on the fact that she's done this several times, this is beautiful. Yeah, it's really gorgeous. She always is going to eat it on the runway for me. <clears throat> so this next look was very controversial in my home last night. Some of my friends just were not into it. Some of my friends were like, I like it. It is plain Jane. She's green. And um, to be honest, the last night my initial response was I like it. The more I look at it, the less I like it. And I do not know why. I think she needed to pull her pads up a little bit. Her Her hips are like on her thighs. And it makes her torso look really long. I think that it's like a proportion thing. But also, if your thing is green, I think that you should be like all green. Yeah, it wasn't a lot of green. It was mostly noodle um, and barely any green. I think also what I don't like about it is the fact that the shapes are changing. So yeah. I like when the I like when the sizes of the shape change. Like, like if you have a dress that's all polka dots at the bottom and then the polka <clears> dots <throat> dissipate and it gets smaller and smaller at the top. I love but that. It's like it's like vines at the top and then like a bunch of weird like triangles and then like four sided shapes is yeah there's like a rhombus a triangle like a like a like i don't know what i just don't understand what the so my initial thought was oh this looks great but the more i look at them kind of like yeah and i agree her is where they were like your hip your hip padding is perfect i was like it, it looks a little low right but it typically doesn't look like that I'm also shocked that she doesn't cinch more. I'm also intrigued by the fact that they didn't talk, call her her pad, but they didn't call out Safira's, who is consistently great. And they didn't call out <clears throat> Dawn, who has great Oh, pads. my God. Dawn's body. Like, wow. Them not calling out Dawn's padding is wild. She because pads, her illusion is always correct. She pads down. She pads. Like, she is wearing a And her waist and hips. is this big. Yeah, I'm, I'm really shocked they've never called out Don's padding before, ever. It, I was like, hmm, interesting, because I think But Don Plain's hair and makeup is always going to be, like, tens for me. She always looks so pretty. But she always, but she, I mean, they, they haven't called her out for doing the same face, but I think also Nymphy. Oh, well, does Nymphy do the same face? I'm not sure. Does yeah. Do the same face? Yeah, sure. they kind of all do. Um, Let's go on to, well, Q always does, does a different face, but I don't know that they're, they're always... <laughs> let's go on to... <laughs> Uh, Saphir Crystal. I, this is opulent. The only thing, the only thing I don't like is that she has to carry the dress. Yeah, that's the only thing I don't like. And I'm also a little. I think this fabric, to me, is just, it's run its course. Which one? This this like uh this like, it's like the fat like this like kind of like, ornate like, like I call it like the drag queen fabric. Well, you're holding the microphone. Oh, I call it like the drag queen fabric. Like mm-hmm. every drag queen, I don't think I have one. Oh, I might. Um, has like an outfit out of this <laughs> like fabric. You can get it in the garment district. It's like everywhere. It's like typically sequin, two tone. That's the only thing I don't like. 
I feel like it could have been executed without that fabric. But other than that, I love it. I love that it's opulent. I love that it's, 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 it's low-key Rococo. It is so over the top. The chains, the hair, the blue and gold together it look great. I wish she was not holding it up. I really don't like that. Yeah. But, but the fact that um, this outfit was out there and then Ross was like, yeah, that red pleather is the best suit. outfit of the week. I was like, okay, Ross. It's wild. If you love it so much, sell it on your website. See how many you sell. Boots. Um, let's go on to Dawn, who is this like a uh, creepy sleepy thing that we said, and I, and I think this is purple, right? I'm colorblind. Is this purple? It's it's like navy blue. Navy blue. Got it. The whole thing is blue tones. This is great. I really like this. I love this. However, she also does this silhouette a lot, which is like bodysuit with hip cutouts and like flowy like bottom pants. Mm-hmm. So. I think that that's the only thing I would have changed, especially since <clears throat> you see all of your looks in your package and you're like, okay, these all kind of look the same. Like she had those kind of pants for, for something else. And she does that like kind of hip cutout thing a lot, but it works and she looks like me. I love the look. Yeah. I think she just wants to show off her body and show off her padding. You know what I mean? Yeah. She has great, she has great, her hip pads are great. So I, I don't want to show them off too, you know? And her, like, tights always match her face and her arms and her body. So perfect. Very impressive. Very impressive. That's, like, gaggy. Very impressive. I Let's love. Let's go on to Q. I don't know what's what's happening here. I like the hat, but the hat and the outfit are two different events. Yeah, I think you're right. And I feel like this hat is just missing something. I don't know what it's missing, but it's missing something. I would not have worn this hat with this with this outfit. <clears throat> I don't like yes the hat is the event, but I think the outfit would have looked better if the hat wasn't there. Yeah, it looks like she's going to like uh like a uh, Electra Daisy Carnival. Yeah, the hat is throwing it off for me, but I like the hat separately and I wonder how she packed it without getting all the strings tangled. Right? Let's go on to Morphine who uh this hat is so great. I love this hat so much. Mm-hmm. It's so it's good. It's just so good, right? The bodysuit, though, gives me, like, when you order a bodysuit off of, like, AliExpress, and it has, not, like, the body, exactly like, you, painted but onto shiny. it. Yeah, it but is, like, shiny. Like, it's got a silvery sheen to it's it. It's, like, like weird. Thing. But, yeah, I think it's I think it's gorgeous. Aside from it is, you're right talking about the... The alley moment. Um, but yeah, but th- honestly, this hat was really the moment for me. Like, this hat yeah. was so fucking great. Um, and she let's, always let's, just looks stunning. Like, facially, yeah. like, she's the mug. Let's have a conversation about uh, this judging. So, Jane gives the immunity to Nithia. <sighs> And which which to me means both the potions are both the po- there, there was no there was no point to even have immunity this season it, like they didn't they didn't even live up to its potential you know yeah nobody really also, used it in the way that I thought they should have yeah I but agree. that's a, I feel like it was a missed opportunity for like some really it, it good moments really fun. it could have been really really exciting but I don't think it, I don't think the immunity potion added much to this season except some drama of girls begging Jane and su- <laughs> subjugating themselves to Jane for like you know some tv time yeah um, and, and everyone's getting great critiques they're, they're not really reading anyone yeah the like the person who i feel like they read the most was playing but even her critiques were like you did amazing it's just when you were standing next to nymphia you didn't look as amazing but also sometimes michelle is like lux i noticed during the dancing challenge you blinked why What's were that you about? blinking <laughs> you have to be focused you, this and is not the time the real, of the competition to blink. It's that we're in the real world. <laughs> we go in the real world and work the world. They don't allow blinking. Listen, it's getting to that point in the competition where blinking is something that we just have to take note of. It just shouldn't be happening. And you're blinking now. And you're blinking now. Write it down. Write that down. It's like, do you even do you even care? Literally, Get out I of was here. Like, okay. <laughs> so then they start. So they start calling the girls safe one by one, and they leave the last two girls. Who are morphine and um, Safira Cristal, and I gotta say this too. I just feel like I do think that Safira won that lip sync. We'll get to that in a second. But that being said, it should have just been Safira should have just won. 
She, yeah, she and this shit has been to, a bottom two. She should have had to prove herself a second time. Safira should have just straight up won, and she should not have had to prove herself again to win. Yeah. And the fact that Safira Cristal packed that dress, knowing how good it was, the, knowing it how was great like, she is, and was, still ready to, and was still ready to lip sync, that bitch is motherfucking professional. She was ready to do so. <laughs> oh, oh my god, they're both wearing blue. Something about wearing blue. When you're wearing blue, you have to be like, I was you, have to be ready, you have to be ready to do so. If you're so. not ready to do so and you're wearing blue, you failed. Yeah, what are you doing? Why are you here? Did I wear any ready blue? To, she's re- ready, ready to blue so. Ready I, was ready to to, blue I was ready to blue so. I was wearing blue when I lip sync on the show. I was wearing blue and yellow when I lip sync on the show. Bringing to the stage Freddie to do so. Okay. Drag King. <laughs> Thank you all for listening, my friend. Uh, <laughs> so they start calling the girls safe one by one. You're left with the top two. Morphine and, um, and Safira lip sync to... Uh, nothing on. Wait, made you, made look. you look. Made you look by uh Megan Megan Trainer. Um, and it was. I mean, it was. A, it was a good. There's a difference between lip syncing for the win and lip syncing to stay. There's, yeah. there's a desperation. Boots, but I think like even Morphine was like, oh, well, like I really want to win, so I'm gonna try to turn it. And I think Safira was just like, okay, let's just. I'm not going home, so I don't really. Yeah, I don't really care. It was. I just didn't like the lip sync song. I just don't I, like the song outside of the lip sync. I don't mind that song. It's 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 fine. I, I don't think I, I would ever. I would never lip sync to it. But it's whatever. I think they should have lip synced to the national anthem by Whitney Houston. Oh, that would have been so good. Or like something like, like American themed. Even RuPaul's song. I, I am, am American. American. Like I don't know. It seemed like a missed opportunity to to continue with the theme. Um, so Safira Cristal wins. Everyone's safe. No one goes home. Immunity potions have been wasted. And my question to you is, Lux, Noir, London, who is going to be winning season 16 of RuPaul's Drag Race? I think it's going to be Nymphia. Nymphia win. I think it's going to be Nymphia. Because of this edit in this episode, and Nymphia's had a couple of not great weeks. I mean, she did, when, when, when they're not design challenges, she's not having a particularly great week. Um, and even when she, and even when it is a design challenge, she like just gets edged out by, uh, by Q usually. Um, I, and, but she is a good performer. Safira seems honestly pretty unflappable. It's between Safira and Nymphia for me, but I don't know. It's, I just, I just have a feeling that it's going to be Nymphia. I mean, I, I don't think you're completely wrong. I just wish that it just feels like our two front runners are just not on camera. Yeah, I was. That's what I was gonna say. I think that Nymphia and Safira are the two to watch out for, and they're like barely in any of the episodes. And we're literally have to like look for them. We're like we're trying we're trying to watch out, but bitch, where are they? We we're, we're like searching high and low trying to find a crumb of these two in the television show. They're they're yeah, just not being represented at all. It's wild. And I don't know if that's because they're not talking. I, I mean, when, when I was on Drag Race, Chi Chi Devane was very quiet. Um. And there were often times where the producers were like, please go talk to Chi-Chi. Can someone talk to Chi-Chi? <laughs> Guys, call Chi-Chi over. She was just a very quiet person. She just didn't mm-hmm. talk that much. Um, but she did She did get some, she got some screen time and stuff, um, which which I, which I which was lovely. But some, some people are just kind of quiet. Did you have anyone yeah. on your season who was just quiet? Robin was really quiet like that. Um, mm-hmm. Who else? I really think it was just Robin. Mistress, really quiet. Just wouldn't talk to people. Yeah, she was just like kind of like mute a little bit. Like she was really like timid. Me is like I like went in and I was just kind of like you know I'm just gonna focus on I'm just gonna focus on me in the corner, <laughs> and I'm just gonna do Imagine. my little makeup. I think y'all seasons revitalized the fighting. Yeah, the girls aren't like afraid 11, to argue now. The eleven girls were fighting. Oh, and they. Like, I feel like nobody ever talks about it. Every week, the girls were fighting on season eleven. Oh, it was, was Raja. Was it was wild. it was Evie calling everybody untalented and they shouldn't be here. It was Raja saying that people stink. It was like Silky, and, and they were ugly. Uh, and, uh, it, it was um, Silky not making nosh, telling everyone that she was gonna that she would have lip sync against all of them. That, that, and that her is, face is more beautiful than everyone else's. It was wild. <laughs> it's wild. crazy. That, but, I, I need like, to rewatch that season. 12, 13, 14. And we're all like, let's not fight. But then y'all girls are like, oh no, <laughs> baby, we it's fight. It's on and popping, honey. Boots. I loved it. 
So thank you all for watching. Now, listen, if you want to see um, our thoughts on Untucked, that is exclusively on the Sibling Rivalry Patreon. Just go to your Google page, type in Sibling Rivalry Patreon, and you will be taken to our page. And you will see, by the way, all of our thoughts on every single episode of RuPaul's Drag Race uh, Season 16. And also all of our past stuff and our regular podcast as well. Full episodes there. So we will see you all over on the Patreon. Bye, everyone. Bye.